Hi, I'm Gary Kim, the editor of IP Business Magazine, and I'm here today with NTT Communications, America's branch, yes. uh, Cody Christman, who's a director of product engineering. Uh, we're going to talk today about IPv6. So why don't we start out with what's the difference between IPv6 and the current generation we're using, which is IPv4? Internet protocol. And what happened to 5? What happened to 5? It was an experimental protocol that just uh, that, that never was intended or made its way into the mainstream. So uh, yeah, what we think of as the Internet today is Internet Protocol version 4. Um, it's over a couple decades old, so a lot of the things that we're trying to do today with V4 just weren't envisioned by the people that created it. Um, so IPv6 was built from the ground up to try to solve some of these issues um, and also uh, you know, put in place extension headers so that things that uh, applications that we don't envision today can be more easily supported in the future. Um, but one of the things a lot of people talk about, one of the limitations of V4, is the limitation of address space at about 4 billion, uh, which we only have about 16% of our address space remaining. Um, and most experts estimate that uh, we will be depleted in the year 2010 or 2011. And that's uh, from the perspective of the regional internet registries divvying out um, address space. So, um, but in addition to the uh, um, IPv6 has a 128 bit header which and IPv4 has 32 bit header so it offers almost limitless almost infinite amount of address space so that's one of the things a lot of people talk about is the additional address space but there's other features built into it um, things like uh, support out of the box for auto configuration which makes plug and play uh, work much better, especially with less intelligent devices and appliances. Um, there's uh, better support for mobile IPv6, uh, for so for mobility, uh, removing triangular routing as it as it uh, is takes place in the IPv4 world today. Um, support for IP security or IPsec is built in. Um, there's better uh, quality of service or QoS fe features uh, built in to IPv6 uh, and like I brought up earlier the extension header so it's going to uh, it's basically an upgrade of the internet protocol and and brings it up to date with what we're trying to use it for today and hopefully um, it gives us the flexibility to support uh, new applications in the future things that we haven't thought of today I'm assuming there's going to be some cost to service providers to upgrade yeah we were talking about that at breakfast and uh, uh, for, from our standpoint, the cost was very minimal. We didn't even have a capital budget to upgrade our global uh, backbone um, back in 2003 to support uh, IPv6 and IPv4. We have a commercial dual stack. Uh, our production backbone is dual stack v4 and v6. Um, v6 is something we started uh, becoming heavily involved in back in 1996. And in the late 90s, uh, we started making uh, procurement decisions based on um, routing vendors and uh, other tool support for IPv6. So when it came time for us to dual stack or upgrade, upgrade our backbone, um, the process was relatively painless. Um, in the end, we did end up spending some money on some soup cards for 6509s. We did have to purchase some memory, but it was almost immaterial. Um, that's the capital side. There is a training cost and, a, and an HR cost. A lot of our internal, internal tools for routing configuration had to be upgraded. So there is a cost associated with it. Um, we found with proper planning that that can really be minimized. Uh, with that said, uh, we're a service provider. And the, the, I think what we did is probably the easiest part. The closer you get to the edge, the closer you get down into the IT departments of enterprises, it starts to get a little more complicated and a little more difficult. You have to worry about whether micro, the, the Microsoft operating system you're running supports V6 out of the box. What are its limitations? Does the, the printer that, I'm, that, I, that I have support IPv6? So um, uh, for us, it was relatively painless. But uh, there are probably other uh, organizations and enterprises out there that are going to have some additional challenges to what we had to face. We're talking about an impact here that is not just the wide area networks, but enterprises and actual consumer end users yeah, might definitely. find that they've got to replace 
routers, printers, PCs, operating systems, all of the above in some cases. Yeah, that no, that's definitely correct. So depending on when your hardware refresh cycle is, and um, it, that, you know, this may be a two, three year, maybe five year longer type of a process. And uh, end consumers, it's sometimes you know, they don't want to have to be told after five years they need to buy a new, you know, buy a new DSL router modem or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay, challenging times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cody. We appreciate the update. Okay. And thanks for watching.